بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والله لا يستحي من الحق وقال النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم الحياء شعبة من الإيمان صدق الله العظيم Respected elders, dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We begin by praising and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is our creator, who is our sustainer, who is our nourisher. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send peace and mercies and blessings on our noble guide Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we talk about how we live our life as Muslims and how we live a life in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we receive many guidelines from our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that would help us to do that. We are not just given you know, the, the end goal without an instructions manual. It's not like we are told that this is what you have to do without being guided along the way how we are supposed to do that. And with the sunnah and the teachings of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a, a messenger, a human being just like all of us, so that it will be a means for us that we are able to follow and live our life according to. And this was actually one of the problems that the people initially had, that how do we follow another human being? You know, why? He's just another human being just like us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded in the Quran and said, you know, if I were to send you an angel that you have to follow, you know, that would be a bigger problem. How do you follow an angel who doesn't have the needs of a human being just like you? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send a, many, a, a chain of anbiya, a chain of messengers so that they would invite the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they would live showing the people how they are supposed to live. And at the culmination of this chain of prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent our beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today I wanted to talk about one point and one aspect of how it is we live our life and what it is that we could do on a practical level. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Holy Quran instructs us and guides us that we need to live our life becoming better people, better believers, better muslimin and better mu'mineen. How does a person enhance their level of iman that they have? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one hadith explains by saying, أَكْمَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِيمَانًا أَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقًا Which establishes this relationship between iman and character and good character. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the most complete of the people of Iman, the most complete or the highest level of the people of Iman, what they have is great character, is very good character. So this establishes a very important relationship that how a person progresses in their Iman, it ought to have a manifestation on the character and on the way they live their life outwardly and in the way they interact with other people. You know, when a person is progressing on their journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are firming their belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has a physical manifestation on a person on how they engage and how they interact and how they negotiate their life as they move forward from every aspect, from the way they think about it, from the way they physically interact and how they speak about it as well. And this is something which is very core to the Islamic identity of a Muslim. This is very, very central. And this idea of haya and good character, it is very central and to all the other aspects of good akhlaq and character. And in many ways, this is very distinct to Islam and Muslims. You know, in, especially in the world that we live today, this idea of what haya is, and I will try to explain that in a, in, a, in a moment or so, but this idea of what haya is, is sort of in many ways exclusive to the character of a Muslim and how we live our lives. You know, what makes it a bit complicated is, there's no direct translation in English. You know, it's, so because there's no direct translation, it's sort of hard 
to understand what this demands from us. Right? It's translated, it could be translated as, you know, being shy, bashfulness, being modest. These are some of the attributes to that, but not necessarily direct translations. But this idea of when a person lives their life, you know, in every aspect and in every relationship of theirs, there are they be you be mindful. Be mindful in how a person conducts themselves and how a person interacts, and then how a person avoids being able to you know, hurt or offend somebody. In what is right, of course. The word in Arabic, haya, it comes from the root words of hayat, which means life. You know, it, it gives a person spiritual and ethical life. This is what it stems from. The more haya a person has, and the more a person lives their life in this manner, it keeps a person alive in their conduct, and in their character, in all of its forms. You know, this is something that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would emphasize and he would teach the sahaba. And to the point where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, Al-haya'u shu'batun min al-iman. That this idea of haya, that in your character with other people, and in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person maintaining this level of haya and modesty, it's a branch of their faith. It is a branch of iman. Now there are two aspects to it, right? One is obviously with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second is how we interact with other people. One aspect of haya is what is fitra. It is innate. It is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kind of blesses everyone with. And secondly, it is how a person lives their life in the circles that we interact with that shapes how we interact. And this haya that we have is influenced and shaped by our society and those around us. In the hadith regarding the first aspect of how a person has this haya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in the hadith, Istahyu min Allahi haqq al haya. That have haya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how you ought to. At the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is deserving and how you ought to. And then further in that hadith, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explains that a person is mindful of what they think of. That they do not think about something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made unlawful. A person does not do the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if a person is constantly mindful of their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and a person is not trying to transgress those boundaries, it is hard, it becomes hard for a person to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in one's mind, a person is always thinking about, you know, how do I behave in a manner that is appropriate to that relationship? And when a person thinks about their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the creator, and us and me being the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what demands does that relationship have with me? Now, what are the demands of that special relationship? And how do I live my life and conduct myself in a manner that I uphold that? And with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it demands that a person is mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that mindfulness prevents a person from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, it's understanding the dynamic of that relationship. Which is why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in many ways warned us in the hadith that إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَصْنَعْ مَا شِئْ That if you lose that mindfulness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your creator and you don't care about what actions you are doing that cause the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, if you reach that level in your life, then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's like you can do whatever you want at that point. It's not going to have an effect on you. Fasna' ma shit. It's like you've done whatever you felt like doing. You have no bounds and no constraints on your actions. No constraints on how you live your life. Because nothing matters to you. Because the most important relationship that you had, you do not uphold what you ought to in that. You know, how are you going to translate that to everything else and all the other relationships in your life. This is the first and most important aspect that a person lives their life understanding their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, 
is how we deal with the makhluk and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How haya becomes a part of that. When the sahaba kiram, they would talk about the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would explain, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَشَدُّ حَيَاءً مِنَ الْعَذْرَاءِ فِي خِدْرِهَا That Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had more haya than like a young virgin girl who's shielded and veiled. You know, just how she would be shy naturally. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have even more haya than that. And the sahaba, they say that when he would be upset with something, you would be able to tell from the displeasure on his face. He wouldn't even have to articulate it. You would be able to sense it from his face. Because many a times Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wouldn't want to say it directly. But the sahaba kiram, looking at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would understand that something is not right. You know, I've done something that is causing the displeasure of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Allah Ta'ala says, لَا تَدْخُلُوا بُيُوتَ النَّبِيِّ إِلَّا أَن يُؤْذَنَ لَكُمْ There's a long story regarding the walima of one of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when everyone was invited to sit down and eat from the walima. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in this verse of the Quran, فَإِذَا طَعِمْتُمْ فَانْتَشِرُوا وَلَا مُسْتَأْنِسِينَ لِحَدِيثِ And again, coming to us developing our Islamic identity, when we talk about how we develop who we are as Muslims and our Islamic identity, that is a translation of the sunnah in our lives. You know, if we ask ourselves, what does it mean to have an Islamic identity? It's a, we ask ourselves, am I translating the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in my life or not? This is the question. What else, what other identity do we have as Muslims if not for the life of the Prophet ﷺ? And just as a side note, and so one of those things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that when you are invited to some place to go and eat, فَإِذَا طَعِمْتُمْ فَانْتَشِرُوا وَلَا مُسْتَأْنِسِينَ لِحَدِيثِ That when you are finished eating, فَانْتَشِرُوا Then you don't need to hang around and keep just gossiping and, and reminiscing and talking. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says, you don't know that could be causing a discomfort to your host. And in this case, the host was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah ta'ala says, إِنَّ ذَلِكُمْ كَانَ يُؤْذِ النَّبِي That this, after you're done eating, just lingering around and gossiping and reminiscing and just talking, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this hurts the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And because of his character, he doesn't have the heart to tell you to leave. إِنَّ ذَلِكُمْ كَانَ يُؤْذِ النَّبِي فَيَسْتَحْيِ مِنْكُمْ And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with his nobility of character, he feels shy to tell you to leave. But Allah ta'ala says, Allah ta'ala draws the boundaries of his deen. And when it comes to drawing these boundaries, وَاللَّهُ لَا يَسْتَحْيِ مِنَ الْحَقِّ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not gonna, does not care about you know, how a person feels about it. Because when it comes to what is the truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines and outlines these boundaries for us. So coming back to how we have haya with, in our dealings with other people, the sahaba would explain this. And when they would explain how Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would deal with and interact with people, the Sahaba say, لم يكن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فاحشا ولا متفحشا That Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم, who he was as a person and his character was he wasn't فاحشا You know, which means to use obscene language just to entertain people, just to make people laugh. You know, just that was not the character of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And secondly, ولا متفحشا Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم's normal speech also it wasn't vulgar, it wasn't obscene language. And when I say that as we as Muslims for ourselves, for our children, you know, this is part of how we speak as Muslims, is we don't have vulgar as part of our daily language. It's not part of our active vocabulary as Muslims. You know, like, like I said, these, these things, ideas may become foreign for you know, some people as we grow up over here, that... It's just become so commonplace to use vulgar language and obscene words. And that's just so normal. But we as Muslims understand and we realize that we do not take, we take our values from our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is where we derive what we define as good character. You know, we define good character through the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we do not leave it to the norms of society. 
We do not leave you know, our character and our moral values to be dictated by the norms of society because that constantly is going to be on a change. We as Muslims, we have grounding in the sunnah and in the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. So just to wrap up, we understand as Muslims that we have this relationship of haya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how we inculcate this into our lives is we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We speak and remind ourselves of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we live our life trying to be conscious and mindful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me at all times. And when a person has this in their mind, that fear and love, that balance of fear and love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ought to prevent us from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is haya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we have this haya with our interactions with people, you know, that should hopefully prevent us and forbid us from using vulgar language, from lying, from deception. These are all the things inculcated in this idea of haya. And as I said in the beginning, as Muslims, as people of Iman, as we build and strengthen our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this has to translate into our actions and how we deal with people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to bring our, to make our character like the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to live our lives with haya. Ameen wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي زين صورة الإنسان بحسن تقويمه وتقديره وحرسه من الزيادة والنقصان في شكله ومقاديره وفوض تحسين الأخلاق إلى اجتهاد العبد وتشميره واستحثه على تهذيبه بتخويفه وتحذيره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله الذي كان يلوح أنوار النبوة من بين أساريره ويستشرف حقيقة الحق من مخايله وتباشيره صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين ظهروا وجه, وجه الإسلام من ظلمة الكفر ودياجيره وحسموا مادة الباطل فلم يتدنسوا بقليله ولا كثيره أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون واعلموا إن الخلق الحسن صفة سيد المرسلين وأفضل أعمال الصديقين والأخلاق السيئة هي الخبائث المبعدة عن جوار رب العالمين فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن أثقل شيء يوضع في ميزان المؤمن يوم القيامة خلق حسن وإن الله يبغض الفاحش البذي أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والله لا يستحي من الحق الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه تعظيما لشأنه ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله تبجيلا لقدر حبيبه صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وإخوانه وخلانه 
أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على أحب الخلق إليك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وارض اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي رضي الله تعالى عنهم وعن جميع الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين وعنا معهم بعفوك وكرم وجودك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا منهم ولا تجعلنا ممن خذل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فذكر الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قيم الصفوف للصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على السلاة حي على السلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل يا أيها الذين هادوا إن زعمتم أنكم أولياء لله من دون الناس فتمنوا الموت إن كنتم صادقين ولا يتمنونه أبدا بما قدمت أيديهم والله عليم بالظالمين قل إن الموت الذي تفرون منه فإنه ملاقيكم ثم تردون إلى عالم الغيب والشهادة فينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسعوا فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون فإذا قضيت الصلاة فانتشروا في الأرض وابتغوا من فضل الله واذكروا الله كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون وإذا رأوا تجارة أو لهوا فضوا إليها وتركوك قائما قل ما عند الله خير من اللهو ومن التجارة والله خير الرازقين الله أكبر
سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تلهكم أموالكم ولا أولادكم عن ذكر الله ومن يفعل ذلك فأولئك هم الخاسرون وأنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي أحدكم الموت فيقول رب لولا أخرتني إلى أجل قريب فأصدق وأكن من الصالحين ولن يؤخر الله نفسا إذا جاء أجلها والله خبير بما تعملون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله